So today we're going to add a model of demonstrating valve behavior to our reactor model. So if you'll remember, we've previously been working with a simple gravity drained tank, which is acting as our reactor. We have flow in coming in, which we've described as Q in. Then we have this simple first order reaction, A going to B. We've been modeling the tank volume, and we've also been modeling the concentration of A and the concentration of B. We've been representing each of those as dynamic state variables, so we're tracking how these variables change with time. So in our previous model that we developed in Simulink, we were changing the flow rate, the inlet flow rate, directly. In the real world, you don't change a flow rate directly, you actually change a valve position, and that valve position determines what the flow rate actually is. And it takes a while for a valve to actually move from one position to another. So in this case, we're talking about a control valve, which you'd send some sort of signal, pneumatic or electric signal, to tell that valve to open, and there's going to be some sort of lag. So we can represent our valve using a first order transfer function as we did, like we developed in the previous lecture. So now, in addition to modeling the reactor volume, um, CA and CB as dynamic state variables, we're also going to model the dynamics on Q in, assuming we have this valve here. So we're going to use that first order transfer function to represent these valve dynamics. So we're going to describe the percent open on the valve with a variable that we're going to denote with a lowercase l. So our model here is going to look something like this. <clears throat> we're going to have a simulink block, which is going to be this transfer function, k over tau s plus 1. So just a simple first order transfer function. Our input to this model is going to be the valve position, and our output is going to be the flow rate that enters our reactor. So to do this in Simulink, it's quite simple. Well, first of all, we need to determine what, our, what these parameters are going to be. So we're going to use a valve that has a time constant of 30 seconds. And we need to figure out what our gain is going to be. So our inlet flow rate, if you'll remember, ranges from 0 to 10 cubic meters per minute. So that's the possible range that we can have on inlet flow rate. So this 0 to 10 cubic meters per minute has to correspond to a valve position of 0 to 100 percent. So K is going to be 10 cubic meters per minute divided by 100 percent. So we're going to have a gain of 0 0.1 and a time constant of 30 seconds on this transfer function. So now we can come back to our Simulink model, and instead of just directly changing our inlet flow rate with a step function, we're going to put in our valve model here. We're going to grab a continuous model, this transfer function. We're going to drag and drop that onto our Simulink block. So we're going to use that right here to represent our valve model. So I'm going to put in our gain which is 0 0.1, and we're going to put in our time constant, which is 30 seconds, or because we've developed our model with a time units of minutes, our time constant is half a minute. <clears throat> so instead of just the generic name that Simulink gives us of transfer function, we're just going to call this valve. Actually, let's call it inlet flow valve to be a little more specific. So now this inlet flow valve needs an input, so we're going to go back to our sources, grab a different step function. So now we're going to be doing a step test by changing valve position now, and then our flow rate is, is going to be a function of our valve position, and remember it's going to be a dynamically changing function. So let's say we take our valve. Let's do a simulation from 0 to 2 hours. It's a little bit long. Actually, let's go shorter than that. Let's go 0 to 30 minutes. 
and at time t equals 15 minutes, we're going to change our valve from 60% open to 80% open. And this should correspond to a flow rate of 6 cubic meters per minute to 8 cubic meters per minute. And we should see, because our time constant is half a minute, we should see in that half a minute, we should see our flow get 63% of the way between 60 and 80 within two minutes. We want to observe actually what our flow rate is doing. So we're going to put another scope here to capture what that flow rate is going to be. And we still have the same initial condition before. Oh, I forgot to run the initialization file beforehand. So I'll go ahead and run that. That's not it. Load data. Okay, so now we've got our data loaded, everything we need in our workspace, and I come back to my file and run it. Okay, so let's see what our flow rate does. All right, you can see, so we reach a steady state, we make that step change from 60 to 80% open, and that does correspond to our change in flow from six to eight. And if we zoom in here, now we're seeing this change in flow. So now our valve itself has these dynamics and it no longer just makes this, this instantaneous change from one flow rate to another. Let's see what impact that has on our tank volume. So our tank itself isn't actually reaching a steady state. We've run this simulation to be pretty short. So we're actually getting our tank going from its initial condition of 70, dropping down. And then as we make that step change in opening our valve, the tank volume starts to rise.